Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. It's your host, your commentator, uh, <clears throat> brand over here. And, uh, yep, more evidence that legalization is basically, it's, it's a double-edged sword that's kind of hurting things. It's hurting a lot of people. Um, and what I'm talking about isn't necessarily the uh, the cops that are losing business. They're not losing any business, believe me. Legalization does not stop the cops from, quite frankly, making marijuana arrests. So this story has been developing for a while now. And the pressure point is between the existing growers of cannabis in California and this emerging new market that's trying to come into play. And what's, what's happening is, is as the regulated market comes into play, uh, some of the older players don't want to participate in it for a number of reasons. Um, but basically, there's limits. You know, like they're, they basically know about what California consumes and give or take, you know, like, and then they'll, uh, you know, figure, well, you know, we can handle this without, you know, this and that. And basically, figure about most of the weed produced in California isn't even is sold in other states. So let me read the article. I'll go through it piece by piece. California's illegal marijuana grows could lead to federal intervention. It has been reported that 70% of all illegal cannabis crops seized by federal, state, and local law enforcement in the U.S. last year originated in California. The large number of illegal grows in California have been Recently coming into public attention, increasing state officials' fears that the federal government will step in and take action against the state. It is estimated that the state produced 13.5 million pounds of cannabis last year, even though the state's residents only consumed 2.5 million pounds. A good portion of the remaining 11 million pounds was smuggled illegally across state lines, officials said. A spokesperson for the Texas Department of Public Safety has reported that Interstate 40, which runs all the way from the west to the east coast, has become a major drug corridor for transporting California-grown marijuana. Quote, any amount of marijuana coming out of California and going through our state is a problem because it's not a legalized drug in Texas, Lieutenant Brian Witt of Texas Department of Public Safety said. Quote, if we catch anybody with any amount from California, they will be arrested. Our marijuana laws will be enforced. Ooh, tough guy. Um, even if we want to avoid intervention from the federal government, we need to do everything uh, we can to crack down on illegal activity and prevent cannabis from being exported out of the state, said Assemblyman Tom Lackey. Um, well, one problem there is, it's not necessarily being produced illegally. Uh, but what, what happens to stuff when it leaves the grow area, you know, is anybody's guess a lot of the times in the unregulated world. So, I mean, as long as I can remember, California has been the one that had the, um, the export to other states. Last month, Lackey introduced a bill that would appoint the California Highway Patrol as a lead agency to investigate black market cannabis. Currently, cannabis enforcement is handled by a decentralized mix of city, county, and state law enforcement. <sighs> I wish we didn't just get rid of prohibition so law enforcement wasn't the um, code enforcers, wasn't the rule enforcers, or whatever you want to call them. It has been reported that 70% of all illegal cannabis Crops seized by federal, state, and local enforcement in the U.S. originated in California. Law enforcement busted 2,117 illegal grows in the state last year and arrested 2,002 people involved in these operations. 
DEA spokesperson Melvin Peterson Patterson said that he thinks his agency will, quote, get a lot more aggressive if California officials can't solve the problem on their own. If the feds see a serious problem, they might feel that whatever we are doing in California isn't enough, said Assemblyman Ken Cooley. California officials are currently struggling to implement regulations for legal grows before official recreational sales begin on January 1st. For right now, our goal is to get folks into the regulated market as many as possible. Lori Ajax, Executive Director of the California Bureau of Cannabis Control, said, <clears throat> Cannabis industry members are also aware of the potential dangers resulting from surplus marijuana. Quote, we are producing too much. Hezekia Allen, Executive Director of the California Growers Association, warned a conference of cannabis cultivators. Allen said that licensed growers are going to have to scale back and will face a painful downsizing curve, which may result in some cultivators being forced out of business as the industry adjusts to a new legal system. Literally, a legal system. So it's it's a legal system, but your grow is illegal, or you're growing if you grow more than. I don't know. I mean, some of these people are used to certain levels of production, you know. And I don't know if they can really continue on at lower levels of production. Um. So this is a uh, this is where we are in California. It's basically like the the this this thing here where you got the 13.5 million were produced but they only used 2.5 million so you have 11 million pounds of weed just floating around um a lot of it is making it out you know here's the thing guys the one thing that would solve all of this what is that what can you think of that would solve all of this bullshit we're dealing with right here? Because if you want to keep going down that road of arresting people for this 11 million pounds, it's a lot of fucking jails getting filled. That's a lot of weed getting confiscated, 11 million pounds. And you're ruining a lot of people's lives. You're wasting a lot of people's taxpayer money, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's just, uh, it's just, it's more of the same old shit. It's just now we have a legalized thing, but if you don't play by the rules, then we got a prison cell for you. And we can do better than this. How, what's my solution to this 11 million pound problem? Is take marijuana, cannabis, whatever you want to call it, pot, take it off of the Controlled Substances Act altogether. I mean, is that such a radical idea? In my opinion, the Controlled Substances Act in, in, on its face is a radical idea, and it's probably not even constitutional. So I would say that the solution to this 11 million pound problem for California is to be able to sell it to other states. Because this isn't a black market, man, is what we're talking about. This isn't a situation where, you know... <laughs> You go into a dark room and somebody's like, all right, we got this pound of marijuana because, you know, we got 11 million of them to, to get rid of. So we got these pounds of marijuana you can buy. We got these ounces of heroin. We got these flocks of hookers. I mean, that's what a black market is. You want to buy a gun? We got fully automatics, pistols, whatever you want. Um, but what they do have is they got 11 million pounds of weed going out of California on a regular basis. It hasn't. It didn't just start yesterday when someone said, oh, hey, we're going to have legalization here. So everybody decided to grow 10 extra pounds of weed each, you know, or until 100,000 people or whatever. I mean, come on, man. Let's be real here. 11 million pounds of weed. California is the number one producer of marijuana in the country. Um, they always have been, as far as I know. I've never seen anything that said anybody else grew more weed than California. Not in, not in America, anyway. So you got all this weed. Um, 
you got a controlled substances act where you can't even take it to the next state over even though the next state over is also a legal state and then so is the one above that and then you have nevada colorado several states in the area are legal states and whether or not they can produce their own um you know they can meet their demand i haven't i've i have yet to hear of anywhere where somebody couldn't uh meet their demand but then you see this is always republicans that are saying this shit trying to restrict these things and the dea is run by a bunch of republicans even when obama was there um so basically what i'm saying is is like you can't even sell weed to your next door neighbor And you can't have a real free market like the Republicans are always like having a big, you know, conversation about, oh, just let the market decide. This is let the market be a free market and scale back regulations and don't burden them with the taxes. And when it comes to marijuana, oh, yeah, go ahead and tax the piss out of it and burden them with as many regulations as possible. Federally speaking, don't let a place like California that has the skills and abilities to and and natural resources to grow bountiful crops that can be shared with many many people all over this country. And you know you're always going to have a black market. I, I don't know how many times I got to have that come out. You want to call it a gray market, you want to call it a black market, call it whatever you want. You're always, it's always going to be there as long as marijuana is some kind of illegal somewhere. So, you know, California, they're about to legalize. And, yeah, maybe not everybody ain't going to be able to uh, get involved in the, in the regulated system. However, you know, like, there's still going to be this demand for California weed in places like uh, Missouri or, you know, even New York State where they have this shoddy medical marijuana program where you can't smoke. That don't stop people from smoking. I mean, people smoked weed before any of these states legalized it. That's why there was a big movement to legalize it, because there was, you know, the percentage of people that smoke weed is pretty big. It's bigger than they'll ever tell you or that a poll will ever tell you. But I guess I'm, I'm pretty much done with this. Like I said, the the solution to the 11 million pound problem in California is to let the free market decide. Let, it already has. I mean, you know, you can try to control markets as much as you want with government. And once again, Republicans are the first people to say, oh, number one rule about, uh, you know, uh, economies and, you know, the rules of business like supply and demand and shit like that is you can't change it with government intervention trying to you know regulate this or get a different outcome by using government controls to do something else there and it simply you know proves to be the opposite when you apply it to this so uh you know all of a sudden the republicans act like and you know, the, like I said, the people that are trying to keep marijuana prohibited are Republicans, generally speaking. The DEA is definitely a right-wing operation <laughs> through and through. Um, and it's all corrupt, so they're all ba- bought and paid for by pharmaceutical interests or whatnot. <sighs> so, you know, they're going to want to um, keep this shit illegal, and you won't be able to sell it anywhere, and they're acting like they can you know, control market uh, situations, market forces. That's what they call it. Like, you can't control market forces with the government. And I'm going to tell you, man, you guys are actually right on that. But you're trying, you know, this is a fool's errand that you're trying. You're like, oh, we're going to do everything we can to shut down these people and turn that 11 million pounds into zero. And I mean, one approach is is to tell the people that do get into the regulated system, hey, you know, you used to grow 200 plants. Now you can only grow 25, you know, or I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. 
but I have seen um, kind of like situations in California where it looks like there will be big grows here and there, and that's just shady too because it's like if you have just a couple of big grows can shut down hundreds of small grows, all right? And especially if you're really seriously going to somehow clamp down on the market and keep all your weed from getting out of California. And then what are you going to do with all the extra weed? Just burn it in the in the bonfire or some shit? I don't know. But, yeah, you can't control these market forces, man. California has been the number one exporter of cannabis in America as long as I can remember. I mean, let's let's face it, man. I'm, I've been around since the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2000, like, teen years that's what we're in now i've been in all those decades and every one of those decades i've seen california weed <laughs> even when i was a wee little kid um nine-year-old kid seen some california weed seen california weed um big time when i lived in detroit because california already had their medical marijuana program well established in the early 2000s and when I was down there, that's when I lived down in Detroit uh, for about 10 years. And, yeah, man, <laughs> I don't know how many people from California I met that rode in on a bus or something, had a duffel bag full of weed. I mean, this isn't nothing new, guys. It's it's nothing new. And you're not going to stop it with whatever you're talking about. And I know what you're talking about. First, you're talking about the local cops who know who all the old-time growers are. And these growers, sometimes you're talking about three, four generations deep that these families have been growing cannabis on the same plot of land. And the local cops know who they are, and they don't give them no trouble. They, you know, Their grandpa used to be the local cops when the other dude's grandpa used to grow back in them days. And maybe someone did some prison time over it. Maybe at one time a deputy got shot. These people all have history, and, you know, it's just going to be another chapter in that fucking history where the cop comes in and he's like, well, you know what's going down, man. You didn't get into the regulated system, and you're still fucking growing, so there's no choice here. I'm going to have to take you in and take your crops and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, uh, you know, this isn't really legalization, man. I mean, it is, but... It's also like we need to do a decriminalization thing that says no matter what, you're not looking at prison bars if you fuck around with marijuana because it's just not worth it. It's not a dangerous substance. You can't make the case for marijuana being some kind of dangerous substance. I haven't, I've yet to hear what these dangers are. Like, oh, marijuana dangerous, public health issues, blah, blah, blah. I've, no one's ever told me what the danger is. What's going to happen if I smoke too much weed? What's what's the bad things that happen from weed? And then here comes the propaganda. It's all they ever got. And you can always debunk anything that they say. But we got an 11 million pound problem, and it's not just in California. It's in Canada. It's everywhere where marijuana is being legalized, which is everywhere in the world. So I guess we got to go through phases. And the first phase is, is people are still going to get fucking raided and arrests are still going down. And who knows how much longer we got to put up with that shit. But this, this phase, that's the phase we're in. You know, in Michigan, we have this medical marijuana takeover going down. And it's kind of a, a lot the same. It's not much different than what you're seeing the pressures uh, in California. And on top of that, that you know, the, the local guys, if, if they don't do something about it, then here comes the DEA. And let's not get it twisted. The DEA is already there. DEA didn't go anywhere. They've always been in California. They've always been everywhere. And when they, you know, when when this shit goes down, then they're just like, okay, put it in high gear and do the do this DEA shit that we weren't supposed to do. And this is the the Jeff Sessions crackdown that we're always doing reports about as weed talkers or whatever. Yeah, the Jeff Session thing. That the Rosenberg dude. Is that his name? I don't know. Both of the guys are Rosen, Rosenstein or Rose, I think it was Rosenstein, one or the other. Anyway, these feds are itchy to crack down on marijuana because they feel like for some reason they've had like one of the one of the toys got taken off of their playground or something. They really haven't been, you know, they've been acting like 
Obama was some kind of like reason why they couldn't do this or that. But really, the Cole memo in 2004 on out has basically been the the guiding principle for the feds not to really intervene while states do their experiments of democracy. And that's what the fuck it's for, man. That's what states are for. And that's what states' rights are for. And um, you should respect states' rights. States' rights should definitely be respected because, and I'm coming from the left when I say, the people on the left, let the right-wingers get away with states' rights on the issue of, Anything to do with um, black people voting. You had your Jim Crow shit. And then after that, you had your fucking, like, the gerrymandering, of course, is all based on racial bullshit. And that really started down south. And then the big thing was, uh, um, gee, what else? Oh, you know, just poll taxes and all that shit. I mean, now they're trying to do other things, and they got the Voting Rights Act um, put on them and... Even that, they still had certain things that they could do. And now the Voting Rights Act has been kind of, it expired and during Obama, and he didn't do anything to keep it alive or whatever. He's like, oh, yep, looks like everything's good. Racism is dead. I'm a black president, so racism must be dead. And meanwhile, they, they want to do all these voter fucking ID laws. And some people might argue, oh, voter, who, who sh- why shouldn't you have to whip out your ID to, to vote? And I'm thinking, why should you, you know? What do you think, a bunch of pe- someone's going to bus in, like, thousands of foreign nationals just to try to twist an election? Prove it's ever happened, man. I hear a bunch of that hysteria coming from Trump people or whatever. I ain't buying an, I ain't buying a fucking minute of it, man. I haven't seen any arrests. I haven't seen any proof. There's none of it going on. All right. I mean, I guess I'm done talking about this. But, I mean, you can never do this story enough justice, man. This is the, the, it's another, like, a big highlight of what's going on in this legalization thing. And I guess what we really got to do is we got to, we got to get rid of prohibition. Because that's the thing that's keeping people going to jail. That's the thing that makes cannabis being a Schedule 1 on this Controlled Substances Act thing. And by the way, that's another another thing that another angle that we need to look into more is that you know like it's this Controlled Substances Act is based on um, a United Nations treaty back in 1963 with the uh, United Nations Commission on Drug Abuse. Now the thing about that is <clears throat> is that recently the United Nations you know, has basically said the drug war is a failure. And then they laid out like the, the prescription for how to really um, do the right thing to lower drug dependency and addiction rates, lower overdose death rates, lower overall drug use rates. And, you know, they look a lot like, I'll tell you what they are. Cause I know them by heart because I've been talking about this my whole life. All right. <laughs> You need to stop enforcing these laws and definitely do not have harsh penalties for possession. Um, No penalties at all. Possession should not be a crime. Any other thing that you're talking about making illegal out of it, they didn't really talk about it, but basically you shouldn't, you know, it should be based on some kind of a commerce thing and it shouldn't be like the police enforce it and you go to prison if you do it wrong. No. And when you're talking about legalizing all drugs or decriminalizing all drugs, of course, because that's how you get rid of the black market. And the black market is how come you have so many deaths in the, uh, in the whole like commerce department of drugs, because a lot of them, whether they're drugs that you originally get legally, like prescription narcotics or whatever, eventually, you know, they're enforced by criminal gangs and, you know, It's what the United Nations um, has said that, you know, another thing that you can do is to, you know, invest in treatment facilities, uh, provide stuff like clean needles and even, you know, free fucking drugs, believe it or not, has worked in places. So if you look at the Portugal study, they have legalized drugs and, You know, I haven't heard anything but good news from them, but like I, you know, I said earlier, all the numbers are positive. You have 
far less addiction, far less overdoses, far less overdose deaths, far less um, people that use in general, and far less young adult or teen use or whatever you want to call it, younger use. Um, And that's it. So as we go towards legalizing marijuana everywhere, you're starting to see that unless it is nationally, California is stuck with holding the bag on 11 million pounds. Now it's it's like the flashlight got shown on it. And that's what I was thinking when I was looking at other legalization laws. I'm like, this isn't really like preventing anybody from going to jail for marijuana. It just shines a flashlight on certain activities and says, these things right here are legal. And it's all to do with commerce and paying taxes and shit like that. So that's what legalization is. Ending prohibition is when you just say, you know what, cops, this isn't something you can arrest somebody for, period. No matter how much, someone could have a whole truck full of marijuana. And why shouldn't they be able to? You can have a whole truck full of fucking liquor. And someone one time caught me on that argument, and they were like, you know what, but you you get caught with that truck full of liquor, they might ask you how you paid for it or whatever, but, you know, basically like, the 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 weed you can grow and i'm like yeah but that still costs a shitload of money to grow a truckload of weed secondly (laughs) like you could also make a truckload of liquor it's not that hard to do so you can do it a lot quicker than you can make a truckload of weed i guarantee that all right i'm just kind of babbling on so i guess i'm out of here um we gotta do better man this sucks i guess we're gonna have to like be strong as we get through this era of legalization.